I'm Tweety Blanza. I'm a rancher from northwestern New Mexico. We have a generational ranch. Uh, my husband's the sixth generation that's been on it. It's um, beautiful, high pinon, juniper canyons and valleys. We intended to spend the rest of our la life ranching on this, this place, just as his family before him had done. But with the event of oil and gas, and especially coal bed methane, the ranch has become so fragmented it's polluted with contaminants, both the water and the soil. We have an epidemic of noxious weeds and uh, pipelines and roads and well sites everywhere, which has rendered the, this property and its federal land, it's a federal grazing permit, so it means that it's our public lands, um, basically unusable for anything except oil and gas. The wildlife have diminished on it. Um, the recreational aspects that you would use for hiking and bird watching are almost non-existent. The compressors run night and day, and they're just terrible. We consider our ranch to be in a sacrifice area, and I was asked to go and show what the ranch looked like from the air. And in our flight, we were able to look at several things besides the ranch and um, because of the oil and gas industry it spins off a lot of other industries and one of the largest things that we saw was an open uh, dirt farm and the close proximity of that dirt farm with the contaminants that are brought in there to be cleaned basically the land uh, the the ground and the soil is supposed to be cleaned um, has a good purpose, except it's right next to a residential area. So the winds and the rains um, tend to blow it in the area of, of places where people live. And so basically you're just putting the same contaminants that kill livestock and wildlife into the air and around homes and, and families. And from that, uh, from that mesa, we flew <clears throat> up the river and we were able to see several refineries that are part of the area, which also put pollutants into the air. Um, three coal-fired power plants that are the dirtiest in the Southwest, or some of the dirtiest in the nation, as well as um, the San Juan Basin oil and gas field, which has between 33 and 35,000 wells. Each one of those wells have a source of contaminants. Sometimes it's good, sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's well taken care of, it's never good, but the well heads are leaking, the pits have overflowed, um, they're unlined, they seep into the water sources, into the springs. And that was the main thing that caused us to quit ranching is because our water's contaminated. All our springs, all our reservoirs, all our surface water is contaminated in one form or another to one degree or another. But as we flew over where the ranch is, and it's about uh, 50 sections, or 32,000 acres, of federal, private, and state lands, um, you can see the patchwork of roads, pipelines, and well locations throughout the ranch. And you can determine that the fragmentation is, is very evident from the air. Um, the other thing that happened is there was no planning whatsoever at all by the Bureau of Land Management. And as a result, there's roads everywhere, there's pipelines everywhere, many of which are unseeded, have not been reseeded, which brings on the noxious weeds, the invasive uh, plants. And in addition to polluted water, you have forage that's basically non-existent anymore. And the Bureau of Land Management also fails to enforce the regulations that are put in place to protect the land. Um, the multiple use concept went out the window in the San Juan Basin. It does not work. It does not work in the San Juan Basin because there's one use and that's oil and gas. And you can't have a viable uh, environment for anything else as long as you have the concentration and the lack of enforcement of wells and roads and pipelines in the area. There are parts of San Juan County that need to be protected and need to be 
something that you can look back and say, well, this is the way it looked at one time. Because at some point in time, the oil and gas is going to go away. <laughs> it's a non-renewable resource. And when that happens, and I, I don't think it's going to be any time soon, but when it does happen, we're going to have hundreds of thousands of acres across the Rocky Mountain West that have been impacted and have to have something done to them. And reclamation at that point in time is going to be very costly for the American public. And it's going to be almost impossible to return the land to a sustainable condition.